case you didn't know, the fisheye view is a regular feature on Baba Zumi's Real Fishing Show. Rick has been the producer of that segment for 27 years now. It's almost entirely an underwater presentation filled with facts and proven fishing tips backed up with indisputable video evidence. In Rick's own words, no matter how fish look from an above water perspective, seeing them in their own environment is stunning in comparison. We'd like to share several fisheye views with you. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe for weekly posts. Let's take a look down under with this week's fisheye view, sponsored by Mercury, number one on the water. Far and away, docks are the hottest ticket for guaranteed action on any lake. For that reason, we spend a great deal of time exploring these structures with an underwater camera. Here are a few of our findings. First off, some docks are more productive than others. The high off the water suspended types are noticeably less productive than low lying ones. It's that overhead shade and cover that's important. For this reason, floating docks attract larger numbers of fish. Another important fact, the wider a dock is, the greater the chance it's home to something special. That's also true of complex structures that form different shapes. Add watercraft to the equation and you improve on a good thing. When fishing docks, start with a shady side. If there's any wave action, always work the windward side first. On pressured lakes, expect to run into fish that refuse to venture into the light. With suspended docks, you can skip bait under or get down low and right in their faces. Of course, these are things you can't do with a floating variety. If it's your dock, you could try something crazy like this. It certainly does work, but then what do you do? A better plan is to wait until the sun casts a large shadow into open water. Then present bait into this comfort zone. When it comes to fishing docks, the most important consideration is a high level of respect for the people that own these incredible hotspots. Though cottagers technically do not own the lake, they do lay claim to the structures, watercraft, and other features in front of their property. Damage any of these, and you're liable for prosecution. This includes chipping a boat or motor. Easy to do on a poor cast with a lead head. An even bigger problem is the chance of leaving hooks behind, which presents a serious hazard to swimmers. This is, in fact, the primary concern of landowners and not the protection of their fish, as one would think. A good rule of thumb before proceeding? If someone's enjoying their dock, move on. If anyone is visible on the property, ask for permission. Stating your intention to release anything unharmed nearly always turns things your way. Non-anglers may even welcome the free show. Before fishing any dock, learn to cast accurately by practicing at home. That way, you'll avoid the wrong type of confrontation while putting yourself into the right kind. If you have any doubts regarding your abilities, move in close and plunk vertically with a longer rod. That's exactly what we do in our own filming. And from a fisheye perspective, it's truly amazing how close you can get to the action. The activities of man have always had a negative impact on fish populations. Thankfully, some of our structures show a positive effect. The very best things mankind has created are bridges and culverts. Indeed, some of the most incredible fish we've ever recorded call these places home. On larger crossings, bridge abutments have a special appeal, and it's easy, nearly vertical fishing right below your feet. Well known and therefore heavily fished, docks are classic man-made cover that draw many different species. Frequently overlooked, wooden pilings that anchor boathouses and other structures are particularly attractive to fish. Break walls are another matter. Usually bypassed, they appear static and boring. Even so, we've seen evidence to suggest they hold plenty of heavy specimens. Actually, man-made features don't need to be that extensive to draw fish. Anchor blocks that hold channel markers and buoys in place, for instance. Even chains and ropes add to the equation. Or it can be something as simple as an underwater cable. On the smaller end of the scale, carelessly discarded or lost items are eventually claimed by fish. It's all about something different on the bottom. In effect, man's garbage recycled into someone's home. Mm -hmm.